Hey there. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can use bricks to create your custom brick shader in Blender 2.8. Actually, we are going to recreate the same shader that you've seen in the intro. If you haven't seen my demonstration video on the tool, let me encourage you to watch that one first. I show the basic functions and some cool examples that I did in there. The shader we're making in this tutorial is not incredibly advanced to keep it understandable, but I think it still looks good and you have a good base on which you can build if you feel confident enough to make improvements. But still, you should have some basic understanding of node editing if you want to follow along. All right, let's jump straight into it. I just booted up a simple start file. And first of all, we have to enable the Note Wrangler add-on, if you haven't already, under the Preferences, and then Add-ons, Note Wrangler. You can save it by pressing this button. And of course, delete the default cube and add in a plane. Just split this viewport and make the main part the shader editor for this tutorial. And that's our basic setup for the file. Let's add a name material, name it bricks. And to see what we're doing, let's go into the look dev viewport. We're going to be using for the rendering the cycles engine under experimental mode, just like I showed in the demonstration video, because we are going to use micro displacement, which is only supported by experimental mode. Also, we have to add the subdivision surface modifier with adaptive rendering. For now, let's put it to 1.5 pixels to make it render faster. Turn on simple for the, for the plane. All right, to improve the setup even more, Let's go into the camera viewport, zoom in a little bit, and set up our lamp here to get it a bit brighter. Put it closer and let's turn up the energy to 250. Okay. That's just our basic setup. I'm gonna give it a quick render, nothing fancy, but just so we can see what we're doing. But now let's go back to the look dev view, in the top view. Good, now to the shader itself. We'll need the bricks tool. You can download it in the description for free. You will actually notice that I added a new feature in a new version. I'll quickly show what it does first. So we go to append, node tree bricks, and add it under the group category. And compared to the demonstration video, there's this new parameter staggered offset. I'll just show you what it does. So we have this regular offset here like I showed in the demonstration. But then we also have the staggered offset, which offsets each single brick row, like this. So you get some more regular patterns. Let's put it to one third for this, for this shader. All right, let's first of all set up the displacement so we can make sure that it works. Just use the height. And I know that the scale of one in this case is going to be way too much. So I'll plug in 0.05 for now. Connect it to the displacement. And then one more important thing, we have to enable the displacement in the material settings under displacement methods. I'm going to use displacement and bump. All right, so let's give it a render. So we see that works. Connect this to give a more to give a bit more contrast. One more thing. We have to plug in the input map. I'm going to use UVs. 
Very good. So as we can see, the displacement works just as expected. Okay, I'm just going to make some simple changes to the settings here, but feel free to make your own differently. Good. The first thing that I'm going to do to make some variations is add a noise texture and use it for the bevel. Okay, this doesn't look great. Let's take a look. First, we had 0.01, and this noise texture has values between 0 and 1, averaging around 0.5. So these values don't fit. What I'm going to do is get a value input, make it 0.01, and this is going to be the bevel input, and then mix the two with a mix RGB node. But I'm not going to use the general mix. I'm going to use linear light. That accomplished basically that we get a lot of variation without changing the average value from the first input. Okay, let's grab this same UV map for the noise texture so we don't get any scaling issues and plug it in. All right, that looks very weird. There's two things. We have to adjust the scaling by a lot, but also these areas come from negative values that we get through this. So we have to use this clamp option. But then also, this is way too much variation so I'm going to go down to like 0.04. This looks kind of nice. Let's get this a frame. Call it bevel variation. And then give it a render. All right, this gives us a nice variation, but it's still very messy. The first thing that I want to change is adjust the profile of the bevel to get it a bit smoother because this really hard edge isn't that realistic. So what I'm going to do is add in a RGB curves node. And what I do is I crank it up here so I get a nice and smooth interpolation here. And then a harsh slope to the end, to the base of the motor. Now you can see that we run into a bit of a problem around the clamped areas where the bevel is basically zero. That is way too harsh, so an easy way to do that is after we've clamped, I'm just gonna add a very tiny value of 0.002 so that it will be our minimum bevel. And now you can see that this looks a lot better. Okay, now that we fixed that, let's add some more variation. What we're gonna do is the same way that we did here, we're going to adjust the mortar as well. We're actually going to use the same noise texture node, but with a different noise. We can do that by using a separate RGB node and using the color output of the noise. You'll notice that the factor output is actually just the red channel. It's the same noise. But when we select the green channel, for example, we get a different noise pattern. So we don't have to use a separate noise texture node. Okay, same way. An input value we call mortar. And then the linear light color mix node. And then to get a little bit of an offset, the math node with add. Let's go for 0.004 here. Oh, 
I was using the red, I have to use the green channel. And for the mortar, I'm going to put in 0.01. That's better. Now, let's see what we want to go for. Let's see a little bit of the difference. Yeah, I think 0.02 looks good. Just a little bit of variation. And as you can see right now, we actually have the base of some pretty nice stylized bricks. But I want to go for some more realistic in this approach. But the methods I'm using can be applied in different directions and styles. And next, let's add some variation to the displacement map for each brick. First, we're going to use the random RGB. And just like we did for the noise texture, I'm going to use a separate RGB to create three different random values out of one random RGB. You want to eliminate as much correlation between the different random values as you can. Okay, so the flat random RGB is going to be overlaid to our displacement to make the bricks stick out randomly. We just use a another mix RGB. Let's get some more room in here. And remember, this is our height. And for this, I'm going to choose multiply. And then use one of our random values. I'm going to keep the factor at 0.5 because I don't want them to be varied that much. Let's take a look at it here. Okay, at this point, this is not at all what we would expect to see. That is because EV can't handle all these nodes because this node group here actually is um, quite big. Yeah, that's how it is at the moment. Nothing to get around that, I suppose. We have to just swap the view to rendered, but that's not that big of a deal because Cycles renders pretty quickly for just the viewer node plugged in. You might have to disable the subdivision surface modifier for your viewport so it doesn't have to calculate the geometry every time. Okay, so we now now see a little bit, a very slight variation in the height of, the, of each brick. And then also I have this tilt map, which I can use to vary the, the tilt of each brick. And do the, I'm gonna do the same, just multiply with factor 0.5. If I increase this, you can see that there is a gradient in each brick. But I'm going to keep it at 0.5. All right, that's already looking quite good. And as you can see, we don't have that many nodes set up right now. And it's already starting to look quite random. Which is always something you want to go for when recreating realism. Okay, next I want to get some structure into the bricks. For that, I'm going to use some different noise types that aren't included in Blender itself. But you can get a free noise pack that I made for Blender with node groups that provide different types of noise that are quite useful in different situations. I'll link the video in the information box. You can also download it for free and append it like this, drag and drop, append, no tree, and then to get all of them, just append the whole pack. And to make it stay, you'll have to add this node group that says append and take this box. All right, let's move this out of the way and then use the dense noise. I'll use the same UV map input and let's take a look at it. 
this is how the dents look. I'm going to increase the scale to about 40 because I want some small detail. And then also get a little bit of distortion, 0.5, to make it a little bit more random. And some, some more detail as well. Now these dents, I'm going to subtract from the height to make small bumps into the material. Again, I'm using the mix RGB node to get some more control over how much I want it to impact the material. Subtract. And I'm actually going to use the height output for the factor in the subtraction. This noise doesn't go all the way to the value of one stays quite low, so that won't be a problem. When I swap to the principal PSDF output, you can see that we have some nice detail in here already. And this is already giving the look that I was going for. Okay, next let's give the bricks a little bit of a structure. I will use the noise2 node group in the pack. It looks like this, but we don't want the noise to be continuous over the whole surface, but rather separate for each brick. There is a simple way that we can achieve that. And that is using this UV map, but then transforming it with a mix RGB node. I'm gonna set this to add and then plug the random RGB to the add node. That way we get a random offset for the vector that we use for each brick. And then we'll also add this to our height map with another mix RGB node. And again, I'm gonna choose multiply. Now I'm using multiply here all the time and that will lower my overall height in every step because the values I multiply them with are always between 0 and 1. So we might have to increase the scale at the end. Let's increase this to 0.7 maybe. Now we can see that the bricks get a little bit of a pattern here depending on this noise texture that we plugged in. But then let's go even further and add another noise. This time the regular noise from the package. And this is how it looks. I'm just going to use the general UV map. And as you can see, you can increase the detail here to get very, very fine detail. go to 12. Now I'm also going to add this to our height map, which is going to be the bump map as well. So the fine detail with it will be included there. And again, I'm using multiply. This time with a factor of 0.2, because it's going to be very subtle. And as you can see, this gives us some really fine grainy detail. But there's also one thing I want to add, which is yet another RGB curves node, where I want to adjust the profile of the noise. I want to have it more like that. That'll make the noise flatter at the top and a much higher slope at the bottom of it. I hope you can see it in the YouTube video and might be compressed too much, but otherwise you'll definitely see it when you recreate the shader if you want to. All right, it's starting to look quite good. Keep in mind that the only thing we've touched up to this point is the displacement, and the bump map. So we have just with this little setup, generated a height map that we can use. 
And of course, all the input textures here, the different noise textures, the different noise types that we've used, we can also use to generate our color map later. But let me quickly give you a rundown of what we've done so far. We just started with our base texture, and then added some variations to its settings. We made some variations to the bevel and the mortar input. Then we added variations to each brick by multiplying a random value to each brick's height, and also the tilt map. Then we got more detail on the surface, added some dents, a general structure, and then some fine detail. And that is a general concept of how you can tackle most of your shaders. But of course, that was just the height map part. There's still some stuff to do. Next we're going to focus on the color. The base color I want to generate out of random values for each brick and then also the structure that we have. There's several different ways to generate a color map out of your input textures, but I'm just going to show one simple way here. Here I'm going to use mix RGBs and plug in random values as the factor. I'm going to use two and then later mix those together using the noise texture for the structure. So that's the basic setup. I'm going to call it brick color. But right now it obviously doesn't do anything because we have no color variation. Okay, the random values are between 0 and 1, so they're going to mix randomly between these two colors. I want one to be very dark, almost black, but not, not quite black. And the other one, maybe like this. And then, for the other mix node, with another random value, this is important, they shouldn't use the same random value. As you can see here, I'm using two separate ones. I'm going to do a similar thing, but with a little bit of a different tint. This is going to be more reddish. Like before, almost black. And then here, less saturated. And a bit lighter. Maybe like this. Now these two will be mixed by this node with the factor of our structure. This is how it looks right now. Now, I want to get some more control over how these are going to be mixed. So, I'm going to use a color ramp and plug it between here. Now I can use the two sliders to give the two different color mixes different weight. I'm just going to increase the contrast here, like this. We can still change things up later. Now let's give this a go into the base color. Now of course, we lost the motor. To get it back, we'll have to use another mix RGB. And for that we have the motor output as the factor. For now, we're just going to leave the color like it is. Okay, right there I'm noticing two things that I definitely want to change. First, these bricks are obviously too shiny and smooth. And also these edges are too smooth right now. So I'm going to jump back to the RGB curve that made it that smooth and give it a little bit more the hint of an edge, like this. And then also we have to generate a roughness map. The simplest way is to just use a color ramp and for the structure I'm just going to use this 
regular noise, detail noise. Plug it in here. And then let's see. Let's see. I want this roughness to be quite high between 0.8 and 1 while being the glossiest at the top of this noise. So I'm going to change this to 0.8, but keep in mind, it's not this value that you have to put to 0.8. You have to take all of the RGB channels like this and type 0.8 here. You can just drag down and change all at the same time. As you can see, this value is something very different. And then this one to one, we can use here. We can use this one because it's the same. For one and zero, we can also use the value here. But otherwise, use these. And for the mortar, we again use a mix node. Here we go. Okay, here another thing that we can do is add some more randomness again. And I'm just going to add another mix RGB node and then choose another random value. Now at this point we have to use that one that we used already, but that's not that bad. This I'm going to change to overlay. So it just gives a little bit of a variation. I just want it to be slight, so 0.25. Okay, the change is very subtle, but for wider areas with these bricks, it'll look much different. Okay, good. Now, we can't get around the fact that we haven't worried about the mortar at all yet. And the mortar is going to be a bit more tricky. To make it more realistic, I'm not just going to mix the mortar into the height map with the factor of the mortar. You could try that, but that would give you some ugly edges where the bricks end. Instead, what I'm going to do is, first of all, get a lot more room. And then the base of this setup is going to be a math node set to greater than. Okay, so the basic height of my mortar is going to be this fine detail. It already gives a good structure. And to modify it, I'm going to use another math node set to multiply. That way I can control how high the mortar is going to be compared to where it is right now. I'm going to multiply it with 0.2. And then plug this into the first input. Now what I want to compare it to is the height map of the bricks, which is this, as we can see here. So I'm going to plug this into the second. And now we have a new map for the mortar, which actually takes a look at the height and not just comes out of our base texture. As you can see, they are quite different. So we're gonna cut this and instead plug in our new map for the mortar. And then also we're going to use a color mix node for the height map, but this time using this new mortar map. And remember this was the height for the mortar. 
So this is what we're going to plug into the second input here. So let's take a look how it looks. Yeah. This is the result I wanted. Let's actually add some variation for the different passes of the motor as well. For the color, I'm just going to add a color ramp. For the input, I'm again using this regular noise. Let's take a look. I'm going to choose a beast plan this time. This gives more smooth control. But I think for the roughness of the motor, we can just keep it as one value, but I'm going to choose 0.8. I know it doesn't look that impressive, but keep in mind that we just set up one simple point light and no environment lighting. I'll show you this exact shader later in another setup. One last additional detail that I want to show you is how to set up the cracks. First, we're going to generate the shape of the cracks and we're going to use a Voronoi texture and change the feature output to crackle instead of closest, which will look like this. Remember that we offset the coordinates here to get it separate for each brick. I want the same thing here, so I'm just going to use the same inputs. Like this. Now to look realistic, these are way too straight lines. So I'm going to add another noise texture. For this one again, I'm using the regular new UV map. And, tra and then transform these coordinates with this noise texture. With a mix RGB node set to add. And as you can see, these lines get a lot more squiggly, which is just what I want. I set this to 0.15 and then change the detail. Okay, without any further adjustments, I'm just going to use these cracks as they are. And okay, where do we go? We were using the height map of the bricks themselves here. To calculate where the motor goes. So I'm going to go right between these nodes here. And then multiply the cracks. But as you can see, now these bricks are way too low, so the motor actually goes higher in most of the places. To avoid that, I have to change the fall off of this gradient here. The simplest way is to just add a math node, set it to multiply, and then go way up to about 40. But also, I have to activate this clamp option. Otherwise, the bricks themselves also would go way up. This looks better. Okay, right now, every single brick is cracked. I want to add the option to control how many bricks are supposed to be cracked. There's a pretty simple way to do that, which is just adding another greater than node, plugging in a random value for each brick. And if we take a look here, you get a random map of different bricks. And we can change how many are going to be wide by adjusting this value. We can do that simply by adding another math, math node, 
and setting it to add with a clamp and then adding this map because then the cracks where it's white are going to disappear. And here we go. All right, this still looks kind of off in the cracks here. So I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm going to adjust the profile of the cracks with a color ramp. Let's take a look at this deep crack here. And I'm going to do one simple thing, pressing the plus here, which adds another point at the center here with the value of 0.5. And I'm going to drag it all the way down here. The interpolation between these points is linear. So I'm going to have a very thin crack with a very high slope. And then to the top, a wider area with a low slope. Here you can see what I mean. By adjusting the position of this value, I can change the ratio between the different slopes. And this is our final material. Now I know, like I said, in this lighting setup, it doesn't look that good. So I'm going to change to a different scene, but I'm going to plug in the exact same shader. Okay, this is how it looks with a nicer light setup. Now, because I want to show you every single step of the process and I didn't get to tweak all the values, it doesn't look quite as good as it could with this setup. It is actually the exact same as the one in the intro with some different values. You can just tweak them until you're satisfied. I tried to keep the note setup quite basic and understandable. I did a lot more tweaking and some additional details to the example shaders that I made. That would have taken way too long to make a tutorial about, but the basic principles are the same that I showed here. So yeah, feel free to come up with your own ideas using this brick shader or just go crazy on the parameters or even feel free to go into a completely different style, like stylized bricks, or even a different material type. Like floorboards are actually also very possible with bricks. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and until next time.